Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Com- Maggie's Comic Partners with Tony. Today we're going to review. So Tony's auction coming up this Friday. So I decided to give a little sneak PV, P- preview of it. He sent me over the he sent me over the Dropbox things. Let me let me just let me just let me just share my screen. And so, as you can see here, as you can see here, we're looking at. On his Dropbox, we're seeing we're seeing over 128 comics for sale this go around. Here are the highlights that I that I found going through this list. The first one on the list is a Golden Age classic, the Captain and the Kids, the Cats and Jammer Kids. Do you even know about the Cats and Jammer Kids, Tony? Uh, they're a little before my time, but I have heard of them. They've been around for a really long time. I think they go back into uh, Platinum Age, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they do. So this looks like it's a golden age book with with Captain and the Kids, basically the Cats and Jammer Kids. Definitely, if you're looking to pick up some golden age, this is definitely a going to be probably a ten to fifteen dollar book. We don't know prices because Tony's not going to tell us prices today. Nope. The next up is another golden age, Felix the Cat. Felix the Cat is a classic. I mean, you can't go wrong with Felix. Unless you're a dog. Unless you're a dog. Oh, you had to go there. <laughs> but Felix is a classic um so golden age um comic book character, definitely in the funny animal category. If you're looking to collect golden age, this is another good quick golden age pickup on, on the chart list. The next on the list. Now I've seen a lot of the you've been selling a lot of these 70s horror titles from Charlotte, Charlton, and all these others. They not they don't seem to be selling, but they're all classic horror books that should sell. If you're into horror collecting, would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, they're typically low low value stuff. So the nice thing about them is you get get a horror book for you know not too much money. Where you start getting into some of the DC titles and um, you know some the Marvel and the Marvel ones are largely reprints from you know the Atlas days. Um, so you know you, you you can end up with some expensive more expensive books, but these will these will be a little cheaper. So then we're going to, now we have the only amazing Spider-Man that you have for sale issue 142, which is, <laughs> which is classic Copper Age, classic Bronze Age, event, amazing Spider-Man. You can never go wrong with buying an amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, these are the ones I grew up on. I, I, I like this run. I've got a um, bunch more coming in the next week's session. So a bunch of, a few more coming in the next week's sale, but they typically don't, uh, don't last through the sale. And then we have a couple other Spider-Man. We have Swarm, which I don't know if you were a player on um, the Ma- the Marvel Snap game, but Swarm was like one of the decks that used to play in S- Snap. Ah, I did not know that. No, I, I Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man was, I think, my favorite title uh, when I was collecting. Uh, just for whatever reason, I enjoyed the stories there. Um, you know, the art was, was pretty consistent. They had some, some pretty decent ones. And, uh, I think it's one of the first series titles that I got the entire, you know, run of at least, you know, up to that point, it just, there aren't too many keys in it that are, make it expensive or hard to get. All right. Next on our list is another spectacular (laughs) Spider-Man this time with the lizard. Um, Spider-Man is coming out as a lizard, so this is definitely just another qu- good pickup if you're looking to pick up some good Spider-Man action. Yeah, classic cover. It looks like it was a little blurry, as a little too quick for the picture, I guess. Yeah, and then some more classic Spider-Man. Uh, we're just showing, we're just featuring all the Spider-Man because you know th- this is this is this is, this th- 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 you can't go wrong with buying Spider-Man. <laughs> classic. It's classic. It's it's enjoyable. So I figured this would be a good feature for if you're looking for a good Silver Age pickup. Doctor Light, famous, infamous villain from Infinite Crisis, um, with how they manipulated his brain and stuff for like for the things evil things he did. But it's a good classic Silver Age item story, worth a definitely a look pickup if you're looking to pick up some nice Silver Age books. Then. I know this one is is half a cover cut off. It's a haunted tank. It's it's GI combat. 
but you can't go wrong with war stories. I mean, GI Combat is probably some of the best solid war stories if you're looking for a solid war story. And this is the death of the haunted tank. So, yeah, so, Cooper, lots of great stuff by Cooper, you know, through all those, uh, uh, what is it? The, oh, oh gosh, it was uh, Enemy Ace and uh, uh, GI Combat, you know, Sergeant Rock and all those. Uh, he just wonderful covers. I didn't I didn't read those as a kid, but I came to collect them later on. Um, so I'm getting a getting a pretty good number of them. All right. Next on our list is if this thing would cooperate. <clears throat> Maggie, I think I lost your audio. You went on mute. The dreaded double mute. Oh, whoops, sorry about that. Yeah, so this adventure, I picked up Adventures Black Orchard because Black Orchard is kind of one of those weird superheroes. Neil Gaiman came out with an Orchard series later on that is kind of one of his forgotten ones. But the original Black Orchard stories are very interesting and fascinating adventure stories. If you can get those, pick up, get those as a pickup, that's a good catch to pick up on. Then I picked, I there was a whole bunch of DC specials mixed in. You had a Green Lantern DC special, but this is like the one special that, that I always remember, the earth-shattering disasters. Yeah, monsters and gorillas and super monsters and oh, just, I think they're all reprints, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's all reprints. But it's a great, it's a great fun read. And then we're getting into the Batman stuff, so now we have, we obviously have some Batman family moving really quick through this and then we have what appears to be a 1980s batman issue definitely one worth checking out definitely going to go pretty quickly i don't think this one's going to last long on the sale chart if you're looking yeah. for what i think i got a few of few of those from from around that age in, in the sale this week and then we got some more Batman family. So some more just nice Batman family. The nice thing about this Batman family is a giant size. So you get like a hundred pages of comics. So you get a lot of good read out of it for yeah. a decent price. Some more Batman family again, not, not, not again, another giant size. It's got, it's got Catwoman in her original Catwoman costume from, from the eighties, which is cool. And you don't really see Catwoman that often back in that era. Okay, so Co I've been watching a lot of Conan YouTube videos about how Conan, about this and Conan that, and I didn't realize that Conan didn't modernize until Marvel Comics took over the Conan comics and really pulled Conan out from obscurity into being a prominent thing that led to his Hollywood movie. And this is just, you gotta eat Conan. I mean, it, it's dark, it's brooding, and it's barbaric at its best. <laughs> Yep, yep. There's a typically a scantily clad maiden in the background, and Conan's going to hack somebody up. Um, I think uh, John John Basima did uh, you know the formative years of that for tons of years. You know the same artist on it. This one was uh, the fairly short Barry Windsor Smith uh, portion of the run. Yeah, he's um, a little skinnier. And and just and just just as a novelty item. These are cool. These are these are like little comic book paperbacks. I used to have the DC versions of these when I was a kid, and they're just a bunch of reprint Spider-Man stories. But you get some cool Green Goblin action going, and it's cool to pick it up in a paperback book. It's just a different format, it's something cool and unique, and it's kind of a '70s treasure that is left over. And I thought it would be a great highlight for someone to pick up for. Yeah, I bought a, a box of uh, these on eBay uh, a couple of weeks ago, and this one was, uh, I think I got two of them in this one that were both uh, um, duplicates for me. So I, I enjoy having those and starting to get a, a pretty decent uh, number of them, uh, DCs, the Marvels, and um, some of the, the graph, uh, text novel stories as well. Um, Spider-Man Murder Moon. I know I had that as a, a teenager, you know, uh, not uh, those, those particular ones aren't... Uh, um, cartoon reprints, but uh, are actual stories written by somebody. 
And our and our pick of the week is OMAC One Man Army from Jack Kirby. This is number one. This is this is a Jack Kirby masterpiece. Looks so weird with the thing, but OMAC played in a big role, pivotal in the in the mid two thousands with Infinite Crisis and the whole OMAC. <laughs> And this is the one man army. This is this is classic Jay Kirby. This is gonna be this is probably gonna be one of the more high end books that you're selling this week. Yeah, that that is a twisted cover. Every time I open the the first page and see, you know, that that lady basically packaged up in the box, it just yeah, giving me the heebie jeebies. All right. So that's the comics now. Let's talk, let's talk some football because we have a Browns win that man didn't the see Browns that one, but now we kind of suck. Yeah, you lost uh, Watson for the year. Um, that reoccurring shoulder issue that's starting to look like a questionable, um, questionable signing. They gave up so many, uh, so many draft picks and paid so much guaranteed money for a guy that uh, in the first two years has only I think played like twelve games, uh, twelve full games. Uh, looks like you know we won't see him again until next year. That's that's got to be brutal. Yeah, Deshaun Watson has proven to be when he's there, he wins games. But yeah. right now, I, I've given up. Right, you know, I, I sent you a, I sent you a text message. The you feeling good, you feeling confident, and then you see someone sneaking up behind the NFL gods on the Browns fans. Yeah, yeah, that's how I felt after uh, the. Bengals Buffalo game, you know, Hey, we won a great game. Everything's, you know, five in a row, everybody's hot. And then, uh, and then two guys out with injuries and then, you know, the debacle against Houston, man, that, that just ruined my week. Well, you got a game tonight um, against the Ravens. Are you ready for it? I don't know, man. I, both, both teams are banged up coming off of a short week. Both of them kept coming off of losses. Um, yeah. It's going to be a tough one. If, if we can pull out a win, um, it would be huge, but uh, it's, it's a tough ask. All right. So actually all my picks, I was wrong about all my picks, by the way. I said the Browns were going to lose to the Ravens. I said the Bengals were going to beat the Texans. And I said the Bears were going to lose and the Bears won. So yeah. it's a bizarre so, week. So I was, so if you're betting with my picks, you lost your money. <laughs> you need your own uh, bet, Fred, uh uh, YouTube channel or something. <laughs> I don't know. It, honestly, if if you're depending on me to pick your winners and losers and you're betting on my, my picks, you're kind of foolish. <laughs> uh, what, with uh, NFL and the parody these days, uh, you know, it's you just don't know what's going to happen from one week to the next. This isn't 1985 anymore where, you know, you can, you know, look at a team and say, those guys are amazing and, you know, expect that they're going to win, you know, 80% of their games. It's just week in and week out. It's hard to say what the heck's going to happen. Yeah. Are you gambling any things or are, you're, you're, you're in Ohio, right? I am. I am. We're, we, we do allow gambling now. I, I used to do um, fan duel uh, until the whole, you know, nonsense came out that, uh, uh, that, you know, they were able to, the employees were able to use the uh, algorithms and stuff like that to, uh, you know, provide, you know, additional context for their own bets. And they were winning a disproportionate number of the, um, you know, the big purses. So at that point, I just said, I'm out, you know, it was, it was, it was fun for a little while, but um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a gambler. So. Yeah, I hear you. I, I'm not, a, I, I'm in Texas. It's not legal in Texas yet. So we're kind of. They're still waiting on legislation, but it takes forever to get legislation passed in Texas because they only meet once every two years. Yeah, I mean, it adds a little bit of fun to it, but I, there, it, it seems like the pendulum has swung too far, you know, from we don't want any gambling in the NFL to, hey, good news. We have an app now where you can, you know, you can bet on, you know, how many times uh you know, one of the Manning brothers spits while watching the game, you know, it's just, uh, it's crazy. All the, all the different things that you can, you can put in there, you know, the parlays and the, you know, this and that, it's just, it's wow. Uh, I don't know. It just, and then, a, you know, a team in Las Vegas now, and you know, it seems like every time, you know, one of their, you know, the officiating teams has a bad game, somebody's calling into question whether they're on the take and uh, it's, it's, it's a problem of their own making. I know it's a lot of money, 
and a lot of it was getting spent regardless of whether it was legal or not, but might've gone too far. Yeah, it might've gone too far. But so, so I was looking at my NF, N, NFC picks and I got a dark horse for, for the Super Bowl. The uh, Lions. Tell me. So the Lions are doing pretty good. They're leading their, they're leading their division and they're, they're playing pretty good. I mean, they're not as good as say like the Eagles, but they're a dark horse candidate. I think the Lions could go all the way this year. I, I was feeling really great about them. Um, and then they played the Ravens, and I thought they were going to clobber the Ravens, and the Ravens just mopped the floor with them. Um, now, everybody gets, you know, bad weeks, right? You know, the Bengals shouldn't have lost to the Texans. They they, uh, they 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 look terrible. But I agree with you. I, th- I think they're a real strong team, and um, I see them as, if, if nothing else, probably be – playing in the nfc championship yeah they're probably gonna be playing the nfc championship but i mean i'm gonna go with the dark horse i'm gonna go with the lions and i'm gonna pick see you know everyone's gonna go with the chiefs right now because the chiefs are right now dominating but i'm gonna say it's probably gonna be the ravens playing in the super bowl this year i uh i i think back over the last two years week 10 they lost lamar jackson the last two years uh, I'm kind of banking on that. You know, he's, yeah, I think he's been taking it a little easier, but um, he still runs a lot and uh, all it takes is, you know, one, one good hit and, uh, and they're playing with the backup and he's, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think that I, I still think the AFC, yeah, they're, they, they are definitely the favorite to win the division, but we've seen the last couple of years they were ahead and they lost Jackson and it fell apart for him at the end of the year. So he's got to stay healthy or it's going to be a problem. Yeah. I hear you. And it's I, not just the Bengals doing it either. Now you got the Steelers and the Browns, everybody's breathing right down their necks. Yeah. But the Browns now are out. Let's, let's consider the Browns out now. I wouldn't write anybody out anymore. I mean, it depends on the coaching staff. And I mean, I, I can't remember the, the kid's name that they got in there, but um yeah, we'll see. I mean, who would have thought that uh, that the Niners would have had the success that they had with um, uh, with Purdy, right? I mean, that where the hell did that come from? Um, uh, you just never know. You never know. But so, so the predictions for tonight's game: Who do you think is going to win tonight's game? I'm going to go. I think the Ravens are probably going to win. Um, I, I I I want to see the Bengals win. They they just look they looked exhausted last week. Um, it's so hard to win that many games in a row, and they keep putting themselves in a position where they uh, where they've got to win a ton of games in a row in a long in order to you know stay competitive. And they're playing in an unfriendly environment on a short week with a couple of couple of key players injured. Um, it, uh, it it looks pretty shaky. Um, they looked terrible against the Ravens when they played earlier in the year. That was with a dinged up Joe Burrow. But, uh, you know, despite that, uh, they always play, they always play the Bengals really tough. So um, I don't know. I, I have a feeling the Ravens may pull this one out. I, I'm going to go with the Ravens too. I, I don't, I, I mean, as much as I want the Bengals to win, because the Bengals need to win to, to stop the Ravens <laughs> and give, give the Browns a chance. But I mean, who are you going to pick for the Browns versus Steelers? Um, where are they playing? In Brown Stadium. I like the Browns, uh, and I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, I think the Browns have a better defense. I think it's going to come down to uh, one or two little plays here and there. You know, whether it's a you know a questionable call or a big special teams thing or something like that, but. Um, the Browns defense is legit. They're going to win them some games down the stretch, no matter how the new quarterback does. Um, and, uh, and Hunt, you know, he's a good solid running back. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, if they can, if they, they're, they're certainly going to make it tough on them. I don't see either team blowing the other one out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the Browns. I want to go with the Browns, but the Steelers already have beaten the Browns. So I'm going to pick the Steelers because 
Because when I pick the winners, because every time I pick the winners, I pick the losers. <laughs> You're doing trying the reverse jinx kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna pick the Steelers and the I'm gonna pick the Steelers and I'm gonna pick the um the Ravens for tonight. All right. Yeah. That would be a sad, sad week for both of us. I hope I hope I hope we're both incorrect, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see you next week. All right. Yeah. Well, that's enough football talk for today. Um, so we checked out some comic books. Enjoy. The sale will be posted up shortly on, on a link on the bottom when he when he when he posts when Tony posts the link tomorrow. Tony's gonna be going tomorrow. He also told me tomorrow he's gonna go be picking up from a big load from his local comic book shop. I'm hoping. They got some some big, big ass books. So uh wish me luck. I'm I'm hoping to come back with a few that I need. All right. I wish you luck. All right. Thanks. All right, All right. So. Take it easy.